Welcome to Strength for the Journey. Thanks for joining us again. Strength for the Journey is a radio program designed to strengthen the believer for the days that lie ahead. We have a website at strength with the number four, thejourney.com. That's strengthforthejourney.com. And this is radio program number 64 if you're listening by shortwave radio. Uh, tonight I have a very special guest in the studio with me. This is Dr. Daniel Daves who uh, moved to Panama here recently from Costa Rica. Daniel, thanks for joining us. Well, it's a privilege to be with you tonight. Yeah, Thank it's you. great to have you. I just want to share just a, maybe a few things. My my good friend, Mark, um, he was on the program a couple of programs ago. I believe it's 62, uh, program number 62 and also 49. Uh, he went to be with the Lord here uh, Sunday morning. Um, he was a great, great friend, and uh, what an encouragement he was in so many ways. I had never met more a more brilliant man in my life. Um, this guy was like a walking encyclopedia, and I had uh, a lot of time that we got to spend together because we uh, we uh, had a business together here, and and it was just a, a real privilege to know him. Um, I never met a man, uh, quite a giver like him. Um, he tithed 10%. He gave 10% in his offerings, and he lived on 15% of what he made, which is amazing that uh, a man like that. and. And the Lord always blessed him, no matter what he did, whatever business he did. He said, I can't remember ever making less than six figures. But to, he was just, um, he was blessed because he was a giver. And uh, he was just a, a great example for all of us to learn how to give. He just found needs. And uh, wherever he could find a need, he gave. And somebody else's need was just as valuable as his own. And I think, uh, you know, if we really love our neighbor as ourself, that, uh, that, should be our testimony too, is that uh, we see each other's needs as valuable as ours. But anyway, I just want to honor my good friend, Mark. And Mark, thank you <laughs> up in heaven right now, looking down from the grandstands uh, for your great testimony that you led for all of us. But uh, Daniel, I just thank you for being with me tonight. And uh, there's a few things uh, that have been on my heart. I, I uh, wanted you to share some stuff um, that's going on with your ministry. Uh, you were in Costa Rica and uh, you came through Panama here um, a little while back, maybe a year and a half ago or so, and and uh, you saw this little town called Boquete, and you said, hey, I think my wife and children need to come by and see, check this place out, and kind of the rest was history. <laughs> well, actually, Andrew, um, well, I knew that if they ever came uh, that it was over. We would be moving <laughs> here, and uh, it was a very, very funny time when we drove up that beautiful road from David up to Boquete. We got about two-thirds of the way there, and my daughter said, I want to move here. And I said, are you crazy? You haven't even seen the town yet. And my wife said, wherever this road is heading, I want to move. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> there's just a different uh, presence here, and there's a, there's a, a peace. There's a spirit of excellence. There's a, um, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord dwells in this area. And so much we've learned since we moved here that the volcano was, was actually named the blessing from an Israelite Israeli yeah. group that settled the city of David That's here. Right. David is the city that the city was settled by uh by uh, uh the Jewish population. Isn't that amazing. It's amazing here. Yeah. And um so we're we're highly blessed to be here and and uh, well, glad to be uh close to you. Yeah. Well this is uh you're a great asset to what God's gonna do here in this area. You know, he's looking for uh solid people, he's looking for people that are um, able to be purified, to be a part of the foundation of whatever God's going to do. And wherever you live right now, if you're listening, you know, that's what God's wanting to do wherever you live. He's looking for people to use and uh, usable people. Usually um, God's have to do something. God has to do something in us before he can do something through us. If he's really, it's really him doing it. And uh, I've always said the, the, you know, the, the up elevator in God's kingdom is the down button, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Right. It's, it's, it's more humility. It's more of a servant. And then if you'll become that, if you'll hit that down button on the elevator, you'll see what God does in your life. But everybody wants to hit the up button. And, uh, and it, it's, it's backwards. Everything's backwards in God's kingdom. That's the wrong way. Up is the wrong way. <laughs> That's right. So, but it, uh, it's, it's really a wonderful thing what God is doing here. I, my first experience here was in 1991 when I came with uh, Charles and Francis Hunter. I was her photographer and and we had a, a big healing crusade in David. And uh, I was up on the stage taking pictures um, as people were being 
healed. And uh, I was just amazed at the numbers of people that would come up that were either blind or deaf. It was like, oh, are you kidding me? Another blind person, another deaf person, children, old people. Um, it was just mind boggling. And, uh, and I thought there's something very special about this place. And what I believe what the Lord showed me back then, um, the Lord said that the, the, the power that was manifested was a direct correlation to the unity in the body of Christ, that there was a great unity. And because I remember one of the things that the, the pastors were talking about in some of the meetings before this crusade was the unity, the, the, um, the difference in the unity in the body as opposed to other countries, because it was very difficult to get many churches to work together in other countries in South and Central America where we did a lot of traveling. But something was very special about this place. And uh, so I never knew I would end up coming back here, but there is something very special about this place, and, and, it, and God's not done with what he's going to do here. And uh, um, just some of the things that, you know, my buddy Ted Heath, uh, he, he bought, uh, we, we raised some money together, and we, we purchased like over 135,000 tracks, uh, these chick tracks, and have passed out probably close to 90, 80 or 90,000 right now out of those. And uh, so they're getting spread all over the province of Cherokee. And so many lives are being changed. And, and it's really exciting is that no matter where we go, if we go to a church and we're ministering at a church, they, they please give us tracts. Um, I was just ministering at a new church. It's an extension of Hosanna Church out of Panama City, but it's uh, here between here and David. And I got to preach there last week. And uh, the pastor was so fired up and so excited of us giving him uh, probably a couple thousand tracks to help to build his church. But this is what people are hungry for is, is they're looking to grow. They're looking to reach the lost and to build, not build a church as in build a building, but build the body of Christ. And I know this is what I want you to talk about tonight is, is uh, you've been playing uh, a big part in, in some ministries that are actually have a great vision right now for, um, large numbers of souls and why don't you share a little bit about some of the things that uh, you've been a part of since you've been here and okay and i sure will and and um I, i'd like to mention to those who are listening um that uh, uh sometimes it's hard to really understand what's going on outside of your own borders of your own nation um and uh, so i'd like to to mention to those um that that first of all panama and much of central and south america we say in the business world that they're 30 years behind the North American world. Um, and that may be true in internet and some other things. But as my son said once, he said, Dad, maybe they're 30 years ahead. And uh, in, in cycles and how, how businesses or nations cycle, really, we are way ahead here mm -hmm. in, in Central America because... Um, the uh, the uh, the people the hunger of the people is at a level that I haven't seen in mm -hmm. the United States for about thirty years, and uh, so so um, uh, it's exciting to be out here, and it's a big jump for anyone to make that to make to make the jump. Uh, Genesis twelve gives the command, Abram. I've called you to leave your country, your people, and your father's household. Those are three paradigms that every human being is going to have to jump through at some point in their life if they're really going to inherit the nations. He says in Psalms, I've given you the nations as your inheritance, but you know you can have a castle in the United Kingdom, but if you don't go see it, you're never going to have it. You know, And, and he's given us nations of people that are uh, ready to give their hearts to Jesus, ready to jump on board, get in the kingdom, and, uh, and start fulfilling God's plan. But uh, God's looking for some people who are willing to go and, right. and to train and to teach. And my friend, you don't have to be uh, a slick pastor in order to go. As a matter of fact, the people really are looking for educators, teachers, someone to teach them English, someone to help them, uh, help teach them how to do woodworking correctly or hang a door right. You know, people here are, are hungry for knowledge and they're hungry for what makes us tick. And how did you get that knowledge? Well, it comes by the blessing of God. So, uh, Andrew, so we are out here enjoying uh, training people 
um, in not only you know, the kingdom, the gospel of Jesus, but, uh, but we're training people in business, and they're hungry, just as hungry as can be. Uh, there is a huge movement. It's a global, worldwide initiative uh, called the Billion Soul Movement. There are, there are groups that are planning to win one billion people to the Lord in the next 15 years. And not just win a billion people, but to plant five million churches in the next 15 years. And they are fully planning on doing it, and they're marching forward just as if they're going to do it. And that's so exciting because we've been able to join that initiative and be a part of it. And uh, I was just in Colombia, just in Guatemala, and uh, we've got hundreds of church planters that are rising up. They're taking a fast-track full-time program to learn how to plant a church, to get rooted and grounded in biblical theology, and how to go into a community, the how-tos of church planting. And this group has asked me to come in and help teach them how to start a business that will fund their church in that community that they're going to. And we have found that all over the world, there is a group, probably 30 years old and under, these people are wired differently than we are. They are multitaskers. They're managers. They're, they have this capacity to manage their garden, to to not just plant and hang out in one row, but to be able to do multiple rows. In other words, many people are raising up now with this, this amazing ability to run a business and start a church. And this is an amazing thing because a business meets the needs of the community, meets the physical needs. Maybe it's a, a greenhouse. We're real big on that. The world's running out of food. Ten years from now, the church needs to be on the scene to meet the food demand, uh, where 40% of the world will not be able to eat 1,000 calories a day. That's World War III. But the church, we can go in and put a commercial greenhouse in and start a church. We're feeding widows and orphans. We're meeting the needs of, a, of a, the local community, and we're preaching the gospel, doing it all in Jesus' name. And that is a just a huge double whammy in the community, you know? Very, very exciting. And we're seeing people rise up all over the place, um, down through Central and South, through the Latin American world. They are ready to start churches and win this world for Jesus. I mean, they're not planning on getting out of here so quick. They're, they're, they're planning on winning first. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, church that I'm a part of here, it's an assembly of God called Lily of the Valley and uh, here in Boquete. And the pastor here has started 45 churches um, around the province. Right. And... And he's just, he raises up pastors. They have a, uh, um, a you know, a teaching uh, to raise up pastors in three years and train them and send them, plant them in church. Um, but he had a very interesting uh, uh, time. Uh, he went to this 100-year anniversary celebration in Springfield, Missouri, last summer, last August, and uh, as a delegate from Panama. And he caught a vision um, beyond the province of Cherokee in, in Panama, but going to the nations. And so he had an idea, you know, coffee grows here quite abundantly. And, and he thought, well, I'm just going to start a little coffee shop. So he called it Mission Coffee. And so he built a little coffee shop just outside the church. And so the money's that's the, the, the money that's being raised there, there's a coffee roaster that donates the coffee and the money's being raised to build new churches, but not here in Panama, outside of Panama. Wow. So uh, two See, weeks ago. And that's that's the challenge God put on him, and he just jumped on it. He did. Um, now, i got to tell you, I'm from North America, and we don't jump on stuff like that so fast. You know, we're <laughs> Too much red tape. <laughs> well, yeah, and we have a building to build, and we yeah. got an internal crowd, and we're, we're really inward thinking uh, where we spend most of our time yeah. and tension and money right. on trying to keep the sheep happy, yeah. and it's, it really can turn into a... Uh, a destructive right. thing if you don't keep focused outward. Right. But out here, these pastors are, they're getting on this thing. And, and uh, brother, I was in a, a, a meeting two weeks ago and I was sitting with church planters. Now I'm a, I'm the big, strong, powerful North American, right? I'm the white guy, you know, <laughs> right? And, and that's how a lot of people look at us. And I'm sitting here beside a guy, a, a, a pastor from Fiji who has started 10,000 churches in 11 years. I'm sitting beside another guy in Philippines who started 1,500 churches in five. How many have I started? 
No, they want me to help finance and fund this and train people in business. And thank God that I've, I've got a little capacity to help there. But I feel like a little church mouse in the corner of their big, you know, of their big uh, movement because these guys are, 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 if you can use the word, they're monsters yeah, yeah. in the faith yeah. of, uh, of creating churches. A guy from Fiji, a little island in the middle of the ocean who has started 10,000 churches. And that's, that's what's happening around the world. And um, I think if we don't look out and, get be, and look out the window beyond our internal nation, mm-hmm. we're going to really miss what God's doing because mm-hmm. he is winning this world and setting it on fire yes. with his power. Well, you know, that's like you said, you know, they're, um, you know, it's like the difference between a sun and a black hole. A sun gives off light, a black hole absorbs it. And uh, if you're, uh, self-minded, you're going to absorb light. We're supposed to be the light of the world. Right. We're supposed to be giving out light. We're supposed to be looking outward, not inward. And uh, I was just going to mention that, uh, you know, he had a vision beyond this province to the nations now. And so um, we just, uh, two weeks ago, we went to Nicaragua and uh, bought a piece of property and, and started a church up there with a pastor that already has a great home church and busting out at the seams and and uh, the next place is Colombia, I think, next month, and then uh, Haiti and Dominican Republic. So these wow. things are happening fast, but but it's because you've took a, taken the uh, uh, limits, limitations off your mind that you're just you know this little four walls or this little area that you have. It's like God's trying to expand our vision yes. to the nations, you know. It, it are we we have such we're we're so limited sometimes in our thinking of what we can do or what God can do through us, and we just say God, I'm I'm willing to do anything. But the main thing that you got to start with, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to leave what's comfortable to you and for you. And if you're willing to do that, then the sky's the limit because God's just waiting on you to step out of you know that little place that you call comfort. You know, that's right. That's the lazy boy. <laughs> you know that you, you kick up your feet and and uh, <laughs> just enjoy life, and that's not where God really wants us to be. You know, and I'm just I've been thinking about this too. Is that He said foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And guess what? If we're following Him, maybe there's kind of maybe that kind of goes for us too. Some that traveling. We should, I think there may be a place that we shouldn't find a place that we call this place home because right. we have a different home in the future, but. I think all to say is that we just have to be willing to leave if he says go. That's right. You know, every every move of God ends up with someone who says, let's call this home, and they plant their tent stakes deep, and that's the end of the move. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to make sure that we do not become an old wineskin by planting our tent stakes and becoming comfortable as the world would consider comfort. When I was pastoring uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, our church had a great church, and we had this huge budget, and we're cranking money out, paying all the bills, and and having great church services. And the Lord called me on the carpet in my prayer time one one day, and He said, "How many people did you win to me this year? How many people did you win after all that work that we had done? I mean, we had done a lot." And I said, "Well, let me go ask. We'll ask all the departments." And we came back. I came back very, very humbled and disgraced. I came back in prayer and I said, Lord, we won two people to Jesus this last year. And uh, he revealed to me, do you think that uh, it would be right for me to continue the business of this ministry with all these hundreds of thousands of dollars? You're spending all this man, man hour time and all these people coming and gathering together to win two people. That's all that you won. You were so inward focused mm-hmm. in counseling and helping, that, and you had no outward focus. He went on to tell me, he said, I'm going to give you one more year to clean this up, and if you don't, I'm going to chop this tree down. And uh, so I told our people, from this point forward, we are focusing outward. We're not going to focus inward any longer. We're going to spend as much time outside of the church as we spend inside. That's the new rule. And the next year, we won over 1,200 people to Jesus physically active. We were there. They were there and uh, on the streets and with the youth and all through the city. And and that actually ended, ended up launching me out of St. Louis to the nations. But it all started when we got our minds off of the inward focus and uh, and became obedient and got out of our comfort zone. 
But you know, the thing is you ask God for the truth. Yeah. Reveal, what do you see? You know, you really got a time of prayer when you're talking with him and you're allowing him to talk back to, to, to us. And this, I think, where most people is they may talk to God, but they don't give them the opportunity to talk back. Well, what do you think? What do you think? How do you grade me? I grade myself, you know, A plus, but <laughs> yeah. what do you say? <laughs> it's kind of like the guy, the man and his wife. He says, hey, the guy thinks he's an eight, right? And the wife says he's a three. <laughs> That's right. And we need that. We need that outward, that outward judgment. We yes. need the judgment of God in our lives because the, the fact is we're living in a day where Laodicea is here and uh, you may think you're rich, but you're actually poor. You may think you're clothed, but you're actually naked. And, and just the threat of that should drive us all to our knees to say, God, tell me the truth. Yes. Don't hold it back. You let me know the way it really is because I want to be right. I want to be right with you. Righteousness or right standing is standing right with God, standing right where he is. And uh, Lord, if you don't tell me what darkness I'm in or what I'm what's really got me deceived, then I could never really stand right with you. Right. And how, how many people um, of those five virgins didn't realize they had no oil in their lamp until it was too late? You know, one of the things I think all of us to just use as a, um, as a meter, so to speak, of where we really are in a relationship is, is uh, our hunger. Um, the thing I asked the Lord one time when I was here um, in Panama, and I was just looking at, the inspired worship that people were up in the front weeping and just hands raised. And I was thinking, wow, why are they so hungry here and not back where I lived in the States? And the Lord asked me a question. He said, have you ever been hungry while you were asleep? And hmm. I thought about it for a second. I go, well, no, I just, I, I would never know I was hungry if I was asleep. And all of a sudden I just started realizing that is a symptom of a slumbering spirit is a yes. lack of hunger. So if, if uh, if you listening right now question, say, Lord, am I really hungry for you? What is my hunger meter right now on a scale of one to ten? Where am I at right now in your eyes? Am I hungry for you at a two? You know, am I snoozing? Did I hit this? Did I lay in my comfort zone for too long, hearing some comforting words from my pastor about everything's good? Say this little prayer, and you're going to heaven. You know, and you're going to be raptured before anything happens bad. You know, I was just looking at a newsletter recently, and, and uh, some people are getting a little bit concerned about all these beheadings by ISIS and kind of wondering, well, I thought that's supposed to be happening after uh, the tribulation starts. What's, <laughs> you know, what's this all about? I mean, there's some not-so-comforting things going on right now in the world, and, you know, those, those uh, terrorists may be heading west. We don't know. But where are we right now? I mean, what what would our relationship look like if we were living over there in Iraq right now or Syria and uh, we were told to deny Jesus and uh, everything would be just fine? Or we say, uh, not a chance. <laughs> My right. head's going to roll before I ever do that. I mean, really, where are we if this was happening in the United States right now? Um, well, what we've would been be trained, our response? Andrew, we've been trained that we'll never have to deal with that. Uh -huh. That's what we've been told, but uh, uh, you know, and I think that's the scripture says occupied until I come. It doesn't say you can just go to sleep and not worry about it, uh, and that really does bother me. When I I have many friends who are so asleep, they just think it's uh, never going to come to their door, and and when I ask them why, uh, the only answer they can give is, well, because God loves America, and I and in their minds, I guess God loves America more than He loves the other nations. For some odd reason, we're much better people than all the other nations. I don't agree with that, but that's kind of the air that that's given off. But you mm -hmm. know, um, Jesus didn't come back for those Iraqis that got crucified last week. Jesus didn't come back for the Ukrainians who who've been dying mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, losing their lives uh, just recently. Boca, it was a Boko Haram, uh, stealing all the schoolgirls and killing off thousands of Christians. Uh, I guess Jesus didn't come back for them. And uh, it would be very haughty for me personally to say, I don't have to worry about it. I don't care about them. I, mm -hmm. It would be wrong for me to yawn and go back to sleep again because it hadn't come to my door and it's not going to come to my door because God loves me. Listen, God loves us all. We have to understand we're living in a very dark time. Spirit, a great spirit of darkness has come upon the world, and it has to be encountered by a great people of light. 
not people that go to sleep and pull the covers over their heads. Yes. And this is the persecution really is where the church grows. You know, the church wakes up first because they're not going to grow until they wake up. And, uh, and you know, this is where I think God's trying to get all of us right now. He's trying to get our attention. And because if he can get our attention, maybe he can do something with us. Because as long as we're thinking everything's okay, I have one article I wrote. Um, um, it's it's uh, I, I, one of the words that came to me was nobody's okay in an I'm okay, you're okay world. And that's where the problem is that we've all come to that point now where you say, well, I'm okay, you're okay, let live and let live. But we don't really examine ourselves first because judgment begins in the house of God, that we yes. have to judge ourselves so that we won't be judged with the world. And this is where all of us have to really do a lot of examination in our own life right now. Lord, give me your scale on 1 to 10. What do you see in me? Where am I at right now? Because I don't want to wait before and, and that day when I'm coming before your door and right. I said, Lord, let me in. And, uh, you know, it's... It's a, right. it's, 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 a, it's a one-time deal. This is not, it's appointed on man once to die and after this the judgment. There's no do-overs in this thing. This is a one-time deal and uh, we got to get it right this time because there's no second chance. And, and for all those who said, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these things in your name? And he said, but I don't know you. Get away from me. What a wake-up call for them that day to realize that they had done all these things in his name thinking they were living for him but it never connected with him to ask him if it was okay that they would do these things in his name or build that or do this, uh, build that business or whatever it was. They, they did these things in his name, but he never told them to do any of it. And for the five foolish virgins, they spent their whole lives being virgins, being dressed and ready. They even had their oil jar. They just didn't have any oil. It was the yeah. only thing missing, and they missed the, the day of the Lord. They missed it. They were not allowed in when That's that right. day came. I, that, that should strike fear into all of us. Yes. Enough fear of God that we would get on our face all the time and, and say, uh, I need a checkup, Lord. Yeah. I need a checkup. Speak to me and tell me the truth. Be blunt and be honest with me. Right. And the Lord always will. He's, he is truth. And we have to hunger for the truth. That is the, that is the key ingredient. Because we don't hunger for the truth. When it's fed to us, we'll spit it right out because it doesn't. Uh, agree with our stomach. We have to hunger for the truth, and Jesus is the truth. And He said, "No man comes to the Father but by Me." And this is this He is the bread of life, <laughs> and we have to enjoy whatever meal He serves us. Amen. Amen. So, thank you, Daniel. Um, appreciate you coming uh, on the program today. We're going to have to do this again. <laughs> Amen. Because we got a lot more to talk about. I know. I want to <laughs> talk more about the. Time has run out for the day, but uh, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. And uh, our website again is Strength with the number four, The Journey, next time. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Be 